Hi, everyone. Welcome to this special edition of our Thursday live training. I'm going to give it just a moment for people to join in live. And I'm going to pull it up on my phone so that way I can see comments coming in. Um, I am joined today, not by Margie, but by David Lemley, who is the founder of Retail Voodoo. Hi, David. Hi, how's it going? Great. Awesome. So to get started, David, can you share with our members here in the Guest Expert Profit Lab a little bit more about you and your business, just so everyone can have an overview of the services that you provide, the target audience that you're reaching when you're speaking on podcasts? Sure. So uh, I have a company called Retail Voodoo. It's a, a branding consultancy that specializes in better for you food and beverage. We help brands in the wellness and fitness and food and beverage space to go out and create beloved stark raving fans so that they have, they can command a premium price and, uh, and overcome co uh, competitors. And so we work in that space quite a bit and have been doing it for quite a long time and are fortunate enough to have worked with some really fancy pants people who've turned out to be huge brands now. So it gives us a lot of credibility. Um, but the, the podcasting thing and why we got into it and how it's working has been so interesting because we have uh, for a long time tried to keep a, um, ha had a, had a, what, what we thought was a really good defensible position in the marketplace. In other words, our expertise was evident. And then over the course of time, the space that we were playing in became um, wildly popular among um, other branding consultants and other graphic design firms. And so it became really hard. It went from um, lowercase b branding to uppercase b branding. And it kind of created this space where it was really hard for people to understand that we had any expertise or that we weren't just making pretty stuff. And so podcasting came into the arena because it helped us to be able to have conversations just like the one we're having right now, to be able to demonstrate expertise in real time based upon not having a scripted conversation around a topic that would be all about helping a set of listeners get immense value from it. Yeah, that is such a good point that you bring up of really using podcast interviews to set yourself apart because when you have a business so many of us have businesses um, where there's so many other people that do what we do and so this really gives you the opportunity to set yourself apart so david can you talk a little bit more give us some some examples and tactics and like what you've been doing to use your interviews on podcasts to provide social proof to your prospects that's a really great question and a really great way to talk about it so that i've learned a lot in that we've been doing this together now for about a year and i've learned so much i it's i talk about it being a little bit like the movie groundhog day and that oh i get to do this again and i'm gonna know to not say that or do this or i'll think about this or i so it's been really fantastic that way and i went in with this preconceived notion that i should just tell my expertise and i should have talking points and i should have a thing and i wrote a book and so i should hold up the book and all this sort of stuff and what I learned is that you have to understand who the listener is and you have to be able to help the host provide immense value to that listener so that you create an engaging podcast. And so once I unshackled myself from all of the stuff I was trying to accomplish and just talk to the people, the caliber of the interviews went through the roof. I want to jump in. Hold on. <laughs> I want to jump in, Kelly, get that in the comments. You have to understand who the audience is and provide value to them. That is huge. So it sounds like for you, David, there was a moment where you went from realizing, oh, this isn't about me being this like fancy pants expert. This is about providing value. So talk a little bit more about that shift and how the caliber of the interviews went up when you realized that. Well, so it's it's interesting. So if you think about the people, the podcasts that we're, we're being a guest on, you know, there's this this sort of central audience that would maybe pay attention to all of them, but each of them have their own pain point. Each of them have a different level of where they are in their own journey. And so really taking the time to understand where they are by reading what the host has written and understanding and listening to some other other episodes, you can really get a sense for what the audience is going to be tuned into. And then you can think about when you're talking about it, instead of talking about 
marketing at a master's degree or PhD level, if that's not who's listening, you can talk about it as an entry level or take all the buzzwords out and make it so that humans who are conducting entrepreneurial business can understand what's going on. And it's just being able to um, be light on your feet. You know, I have a coach and he's, he always teases me. Um, he says, I bet if you had more time, it would have been simpler. And the cool thing about podcasts is if you go in and you just know that you're going to try to provide value to those people, you have to keep it really simple. And so it, it forces you to know your stuff and say it tightly. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So talk about how you've been using this with prospects. So let's say you have a prospective client who I'm guessing they didn't hear about you through the podcast interview. So you have a prospective client. Now, how are you using your interview appearances on podcasts in that conversation with them and in that sales um, pipeline process? Yeah. So, uh, so um, an opportunity comes in, um, a brand has a a specific need and they go about the notion of interviewing a group of agencies and how we go from one of 35,000 choices to something where we get into to the people they're actually going to talk to is uh, giving them an opportunity to demonstrate what it's like to work with us and podcasts are the best way because uh, what I say is if you don't like how this voice sounds or you don't like the way I'm gesturing with my hand, this is probably not going to be a good fit. So I actually will pick a couple of episodes based upon whatever we've talked about in our pain points. And I'll make sure that they go to minute 246 and they know that that's the point. And so it's powerful. Yeah. I love that. Oh my gosh. That is such a great tip. You not all, you don't just say, Hey, listen to this 30 minute episode, which is kind of a big ask to tell someone, Hey, will you spend 30 minutes listening to me when they haven't chosen to work with you yet? But go to minute 246 and hear me answer this question. That is genius. Kelly, put that in the comments here. Tell your prospects to go to a specific timestamp in the episode where you're answering a question that they had. That is that's genius right there, David. <laughs> Do you have any other tips of, of what you're saying and how you're using these interviews with your prospects? Well, I, I think what I'd like to talk about is, is just like when we did FaceTime right now. It was so amazing. I have people that I have never spoken to who know my, um, my visual and, and verbal uh, lingo. And so they assume they know me better when we first meet because they've heard me talk about something that is meaningful to them. And so when we finally do connect, and a lot of it is happening over Zoom now, we're, um, there's this incredible camaraderie where prior to you know, COVID-19 and having all of this data out there and all of these visuals out there and audio out there, there was this um, mountain of trust we had to come, overcome. And now it just feels like it's, it's, it's gone away. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Increased trust is, is huge. That's such a big benefit that you get from, from doing podcast interviews and having your prospects listen. How have the conversations been going with podcast hosts? Um, because a lot of what we talk about is, is this, it's this high end networking that you're doing. So um, do you have anything to share there on like your conversations with hosts and the relationships that you've created with hosts and or listeners along the way over the last year? Yeah, what I will tell you is that there's not every single host is going to want to be your buddy, uh, <laughs> but um, there are certain things when we are talking and it's a real conversation and I feel that we're having a real conversation and they feel that we're having a real conversation that sounds uncanned compared to other episodes, they want to stay in touch. And when the episode goes live and we talk about it again, what that that conversation has created a couple of relationships, um, actually several relationships for me where I'm still in touch with them and we're planning, well, when am I coming back on the show is something. So you, they we're talking about when is the repeat? What's the next thing we want to talk about? But more importantly than that even is that when this whole thing we're going through right now with um, the um, flatten the curve started happening, I put out an offer to have anybody who wanted to just have a therapy session for 15 minutes over Zoom with me and some of the podcast guest hosts. And I've had amazing conversations about their business. And it's, so it's really kind of cool. Um, it just created the human connection, you know? I love that. I love it.
love that you did that. And I love that the, did you, did you put that out on social media? Like, and yeah. they called you and they just said, Hey, I want to talk to you again. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. I love that. David, were there any, before you decided to work with interview connections and make an investment in, you know, you said you've been working with us for the last year, you just renewed your account with us. Were there any fears or hesitations before you first made that investment working with us to get out there on podcasts? Yeah, there was a lot of fear and hesitation. Um, being human, I, I was self-conscious of, I didn't want to do video, I didn't want to do audio, I was worried that I would stumble. So that sort of thing, of course, the more you do it, you overcome that very rapidly. But in addition to that, I was quite worried about how am I going to quantify this? How am I going to prove that this marketing spend is something that is making a huge difference? And while it doesn't happen overnight, it is, it is a, kind of like yoga. Um, meaning that, you know, when you first start yoga, you cannot touch your toes unless you were already super stretchy. But in six months, you can pretty much bend any way you want. And I think that um, our relationship and the amount of podcasts I have been on in the last year has made me really flexible. And I'm able to see how that plays out in my confidence in front of small, medium, and large groups. And I'm able to see that humans that want to do business with us are checking it out when we make it snackable for them. Oh, I love that you said, you mentioned about your confidence. I did a post really touching on that this morning in our, in our group, because what I see and my, one of my greatest joys of, of being in this business and helping people get booked is helping them increase their confidence. And I love how you compared it to yoga because I love doing yoga too. And and it is really true. And, and so much of the conversation is like leads and have you gotten any clients from it? And what's the ROI? And like, yes, that is important. We have lots of testimonials and case studies about people making massive sales through podcast listeners. And sometimes the biggest impact is the non-quantifiable results, which is like, I am so much more confident with prospects now because I've been asked this question about you know, whatever, 10 times over the last two months on podcast interviews. So I just love that you shared that, David. I didn't know you were going to say that, but I, it is like the theme of the day. <laughs> it's a good theme. Yeah. That is awesome. Are there any other words of wisdom that you'd want to share with, you know, we have a lot of entrepreneurs in this group that are, you know, they're tuning into our virtual speaking bootcamp this week. They're watching, you know, this training today and just thinking about like taking that step to get booked, especially in, you know, in uncertain times, every, everyone's pivoting and um, you're really leaning in. You said, I'm going to do another year of interviews with you guys. What would be your biggest tip or word of wisdom that you could offer to entrepreneurs that are in your shoes a year ago before you decided to get started with us? Yeah, I think that you kind of hit it on the head. I think it is lean in, take action. It's okay if this uh, situation and this pending recession knocks you on your butt because it probably will. This is my third recession owning an agency through it. So um, I've learned a couple of things. And so I'm super Zen compared to most of my contemporaries because I have done it and I know what's going to happen. And so I know what not to do. And the thing not to do is to sit there and hide or freak out. That doesn't do anybody any good. If you dust yourself off, pick yourself up, recalibrate if you need to, take a moment, have a cry, go for a walk, whatever it is you need to do, and then make a three-point plan and start taking action. That is amazing. David, thank you so much. So for everyone listening, Kelly will put the link in the comments. I am available for 15-minute consultations to hear about your business. We'll talk about how this can work for you. Um, we are offering some great discounts and bonuses for inter for folks that get started. And I just want to talk to you guys. I'm so passionate about you all leaning in and getting exposure for what you do, increasing your confidence in yourself, in your business, in your message right now. So um, click the link in the comments. It's um, interviewconnections.com slash call will get you there. And I would love to talk to you. David, thank you so much again for coming on today. Thanks for having me. And where can listeners connect with you, David? <laughs> um, you can find me at the website Retail Voodoo. You can check it out, check it out there. I have email links. The book is available. You can even download the first chapter for free if you're interested in checking it out. Um, yeah, every way to get a hold of me is through that. Awesome. Thanks so much, David.